most of my career has actually been in management consulting and one fundamental shift for me when moving from mckinsey to paytm was the shift in mindset from being an advisor to actually being an implementer if you join consulting you straight away get exposure to very senior leaders i would say just from building a career resilience standpoint right so with a yeah. lot of these uh, ai tools which are coming up chat gpt a lot of, a lot of these things you know can now be done quite easily wherein you don't need that functional experience what is the cultural difference between both these places industry versus consulting and that is enough of a thought starter at times for for people hello ankur thanks for joining the conversation glad to Thank have you, you and i'm very very excited about what's the conversation about and how it is going to unfold so why don't you first introduce yourself a bit uh, and then let's jump into the conversation sure no thank you pavan really excited to be here i've been following your content on both linkedin and youtube thank you uh, a bit about me so i am from faridabad i uh, you know pretty much the standard combination of engineering and mba followed by management consulting most of my career has actually been in management consulting split across bcg and mckinsey with a short stint in between at paytm where i was leading a few of their business categories all right ankur so now uh, let's talk about your uh, experience or your thoughts on work life balance okay so what do okay. you think do you have work life balance right now in consulting <laughs> that's that's a tricky one pavan so uh, i would say i'm i'm getting there so i would not say i have the work life balance which i aspire for but uh, it is significantly better where i was a couple of years back so mm. you know over the years uh, i have consciously made it made few priorities in my life and i i'm actively trying to spend time there so i'm getting there but yes it's it's the my end state aspiration it's it's still far okay got it okay what does work life balance mean for you we should have started with this question but that's mm. fine now i would like to know at least <laughs> what does it mean for you see so, when i when i had first started my consulting career uh, there were cases where where i worked on and at 18 hours a day for weeks and i did not enjoy it i was like you know i don't have any time for myself i purposefully then took a case which was quite low on working hours uh, you know we were helping a social sector client and it was like 5 6 hours a day and i did not enjoy it so you know i was there for 3 months and i was like you know uh, what's this like what what do i do where is impact what what am i doing in my life and uh, and that's when i sort of realized that you know it's hard to define work life balance in terms of hours or in terms of you know one particular aspect so my definition of work life balance is to actually get into a routine which leaves you energized and for that you just need to understand what are your priorities in life so for me personally i feel work is important for me it gives me meaning it gives me uh, i enjoy solving complicated problems but there is a, is a limit to it so i won't enjoy 18 hour 12 hour uh, 18 hour 20 hour work days but at the same time i want to have something substantial to do during my days so meaningful work is something which i definitely solve for and at the same time during my work days i carve out time for myself in the morning where it's just for me i can focus on my health do some meditation go out for running in the evening i take out some time for my family so i'll typically call at home i'll spend some time you know with my wife in the evening so those are some of the non negotiables i have and which are enough to you know keep me energized and move through the week and on weekends i typically take out time for my other hobbies and passions so i actively write on linkedin so i take out time for linkedin over the weekend i read actively so i take out time for reading over the weekend so i would say just having this sort of routine has helped me remain sane and stable with all the working pressure so that's my longer answer to work life balance fair enough fair enough i think i think how about uh, you do you think you have work life balance pavan uh yes i think i do have good work life balance and i i have spent 15 years to get here by the way it is right. not a short time so i have 15 years 14 years of overall work experience and uh, i realized that if you want to work hard people will always say yes right if you work <laughs> for 18 hours people will ask you to work for 19 hours and if That's you work true. for 10 hours people will ask you to work for 12 hours so it is a never ending game so as you rightly pointed out it's okay you need to draw those boundaries and more than drawing the boundaries i realized it is more important to convey these boundaries you need to 
open up and communicate it to your team to your manager to whoever it is and say these are my yeah. personal boundaries which i don't want to cross and if you can't build these walls in that particular organization or in that particular project you leave that is right. the one that is the one thing specifically i believe is when you actually have a good reason to leave a company or to leave a project right, right? right. otherwise i completely agree with that right uh, uh, and uh, if you don't right if you don't people don't know what you want was and people don't care it's your responsibility to prioritize what you want and you need to communicate that that's something which i realized over years both in consulting yes. and now one other question you worked in both industry at ptm and also in consulting so what do where do you see the balance is little better so in term and i'll be i'll be very honest here so i think in terms of control it's much better in the industry uh because you know you have control of your time in consulting one thing which you know we have to realize is that at the end of the day it's a client service business and therefore your schedule in a way is dependent on the client and the, the and their needs right so you don't really control when a meeting can come up when the client leadership might give you time what topics they might be interested in right so that is one additional factor which comes into the mix because of which there is i would say more unpredictability in terms of your schedule and which at times also throws out those couple of hours of additional time which you could you could have gotten and this is what i observed uh, with respect to how why north america consulting versus industry is way more organized in terms of work life balance or getting at a reasonable hour doing whatever yeah. you want to do on a daily basis right hmm. i this the differences are very stark in southeast asia indonesia malaysia india majority of the big businesses are end of the day these are public companies but still they are family run businesses right, right. Uh, and you go and look at north america you won't even find a, like probably five companies which are huge and family run right right their ceos cfos all these guys also have a family they have their family life personal life so they won't work on a saturday or a sunday but if you mm. look at uh, in indonesia i was working on a client at indonesia the client it's a family run business one of the biggest conglomerates over there and he's 95 years old 90 years old and he's okay. like hey i'll get to the office when there is no traffic so that's saturday morning and i okay. want the, and i want the team to be there to present stuff on wednesday afternoon i'm playing golf outside of the city right so right. your schedules are completely thrown out of the window so right. i i found this really uh, as a big factor in terms of how even clients perceive work life balance no the, and and that's completely true right so given that you are in a client service business your lifestyle essentially will be dependent on the client that you're serving having said that i would say you know in the last few years i have seen an active shift of from consulting firms also to push for better better work life balance so you know uh, top management consulting firms are a lot more vocal about when they would or they would not do meetings uh, with the clients so you know at times when, even when you get a request for a saturday or sunday meeting you do see you know consulting leadership also push back to say that can this be done on monday you know our people don't don't really work on weekends and that is an active shift i have at least observed in the last few years yeah now now i have one more question for you you can be very honest you can say whichever way you like but <laughs> now a lot of folks who are you have 7 years experience i have 14 years experience we have been through that initial curve of like a working very very hard right yeah. now there are folks coming out of under graduation like 21 22 years old and there is a lot of conversation on social media around work life balance right. what would be your recommendation or yeah how would you ask them to take all these things up one thing which a lot of young people uh, i would say don't take into account is that choices will have consequences right so i see there's a lot of mismatch in terms of expectations uh, that that a lot of people entering say tough careers is is out there so people want a better work life balance but they also want a faster career growth which do not go hand in hand right so at some point you have to compromise and it's okay if you don't want a faster career growth it's okay if you want a ha- want to have a better balance in terms of your personal life or in terms of choosing something else all of that is fine but 
that clarity needs to be there that you know whatever you choose will have consequences so you know you cannot say that i will not push myself hard enough at work and expect uh, you know the expect to be the, the best performer out there i think that's something which needs a bit more clarity of thought okay so you're not giving any advice straight up but you are telling that hey you need to figure out what you really care about and then I, because I, I, I don't think there's an answer right because, because I, I don't think there's a, i don't think there's a straight answer right because hmm. i honestly do respect people you know who prioritize the personal health who prioritize their mental health over everything else and that's perfectly fine what i do feel is that at times people just want to have everything and you cannot have everything so you know if you want to work say 6 hours 7 hours a day then that's fine that's your choice but expecting that along with that 6 hours 7 hours you get a fast track career where others are working 12 hours 13 hours i think that's just unrealistic expectation true true i think there is a social media fad like hey i'll get a glamorous work life balance and i'll also grow very fast in my career and also i'll get a fat salary and also i'll go and do my mba at harvard and i'll become a ceo in another two years right there is like the timelines are like absolutely crushed people just don't want right. to spend more time on anything uh, which is valuable so i think fair enough uh, somebody having that insight knows what to do how to do it i think that's the way to go about it now let's talk a bit about the other angle uh, ankur okay. uh, what are your thoughts around uh, management consulting as an industry itself do you think okay. uh, yes it will survive of course the industry will survive there are a lot of great people in the industry but what according mm-hmm. to you are the three most typical or critical challenges that management consulting industry should solve for i think that's a that's a good question and uh, in my mind i would say one is actually solving for the right talent so you know historically for top consulting firms the answer to every problem was put a project manager along with three consultants and you know they'll do the analysis they'll come up with answers and they'll they'll basically bring out the right insights which no longer is true you know a lot of the problem statements that you get these days are not just you know build a strategy for us or do revenue enhancement for us the problem statements are a lot more specific saying that can you help us launch this digital product in the next 3 months or 4 months which a generalist by themselves cannot do right so the talent pool that you now need is generalist consultants plus people who have that product experience plus people who are good at analytics plus people who have some digital knowledge right and therefore that's that's also something you see in the teams so teams are no longer like a pm plus 3 standard generalist team it's more like a project manager plus a generalist consultant plus a data scientist plus an analytics leader plus a product manager so solving for that and ensuring that you know you have the right talent i would say is one of the biggest challenges for consulting firms going forward second i think related to it is also getting in place those customized tools and processes so nowadays again clients they don't they're not looking for a strategy deck of say 50 page or 100 page at the end of a project they are looking for tangible tools which they can then use even after you leave so investing in those tools in those platforms uh, which are customizable for clients i'll say that's the second second most important thing and third i would say also is uh, getting more proactive in some of the new topics which are coming up so climate and sustainability esg all of these uh, you know practically no one used to talk about them at least in india till till a few years back and we do see a lot of clients now actually want having aspirations to meet these targets so just also so, so being ahead of the curve on new topics such as climate sustainability even generative ai chat gpt understanding how it will play out for business so just being one step ahead uh, from industry on those topics would again be critical for management consulting firms fair enough fair enough i think that's a great answer which industries do you see are more heavily dependent on consultants versus industries which do not take a lot of consultant support if you ask me that question yes. at least in north america mm-hmm. uh, region i would say you will hardly find uh, consulting teams in big tech companies like let's say apple i don't know if apple has a policy of not mm-hmm. getting a lot of consulting companies <laughs> come on board 
uh, or Google, for example, doesn't have any consultants on its core strategy teams. Yes, they do have consultants coming and helping them out with finance or other uh, non-essential parts of the business. These are some of the areas where I haven't seen many consulting teams being set up. What, in your opinion, is something like that in India? So I think, honestly, see, I can't give the client names, but in terms ah. of uh, industries, uh, at least I, I do I have seen a fair split, you know, across across industries in India. And I think the problem statement typically changes across industries is what I've seen. So, you know, in companies where you have a strong strat- internal strategy team, the problem statement will be a lot more specific to say that, hey, can you come in for six weeks, eight weeks, eight weeks for us and just analyze this one particular part and tell us the answer. So they have a broader strategy in place, but a couple of complex topics which they are not able to figure out, they would engage a management consulting firm there. Versus in companies or industries where you don't typically see strong internal strategy teams, typically say in industrial goods or energy, where you would not see a lot of internal strong internal strategy teams, there the problem statements would also be more open-ended uh, and and that would also impact the kind of projects that you do. So I would say in terms of split, I have seen, at least in India, consulting firms serving all industries. It's just that the nature of work will significantly vary depending on the maturity of strategy team they have in turn. Yeah, also one other point I would like to highlight is the nature of the problems also differ a lot between the developed economies and the developing economies. That's true. Uh, yeah. In the developed economies, more and more projects are around, hey, how do we optimize our processes? How do we reduce costs? How do we target that 1%, 2% growth, right? Very if true. Walmart is growing by 1% or 2%, it's huge celebration, right? Uh, right? If like these big companies within the US, the conversations is always around, hey, how can we grow next year by 1.5%, 2%? That's it. Nobody talks about 5%. However, Correct. when I came to in India, contrast, and, uh, <laughs> India's in 5X. contrast, <laughs> at least 5x, right? In Indonesia, I was working with a project uh, with a partner and he was like, oh, I didn't knew that uh, consulting companies solve these kind of problems in general. We are always okay. solving growth problems. How do we grow 5x, 10x, right? So I saw Correct. that difference in both these geographies. Now, also, uh, uh, what is your perception of how do these consulting companies themselves differ, BCG versus McKinsey? See, honestly, uh, you know, I would say BCG, McKinsey, or even, you know, other consulting top firms, right, Bain, Ghani, all of them are like great, great places to be, be in. And, uh, you know, personally, anyone who reaches out to me, I say that, you know, if you are in a position where you have to choose between these firms, then consider yourself to be very fortunate. You can ne- never go wrong uh, yeah. because the kind of clients they serve, the kind of talent they have, it's it's all it's all equivalent. And you know you can make great careers out of all of those places. Having said that, there are certain subtle differences in how the firms operate, right? Uh, so in McKinsey, I would say it's been longer in the industry. It was one of the earlier ones, so you would typically see a lot more structures or a lot more frameworks and a lot, basically a more structured way of doing things versus say uh, at BCG, you would see a lot more entrepreneurial sort of ways of solving things, uh, a lot more, you know, contextualizing of things. So there's no right, wrong or right answer here, so to say, because different things work in different contexts and honestly, both firms are doing great for themselves. Uh, it's a very subtle difference and I would say for yeah. especially young professionals who are sort of thinking of where should I build a career, I would say you can just cho- choose and go with any one of them. You cannot go wrong. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Now, uh, of course, I uh, want to end the conversation with one question. For folks who are preparing for these interviews, any guidance, any recommendations that you have? So I would say, uh, I think... At least over the years, what I have seen is that people spend a lot of time doing case prep, uh, you know, working with others, figuring out the frameworks for themselves, what what works, what does not work. But they don't spend a lot of time actually thinking their story on what they have done in their life, why do they want to do consulting. And I think having that clarity of story is a great differentiator in in, in any of these interviews. Because with the easy accessibility to resources, for how to prepare for consulting, you know, uh, I've seen 
people are do- really smart and can really just crack the cases it's no longer the most difficult aspect of the interview what is more difficult now is to actually just having that clarity that why do you want to do consulting and what have you done so far in your life that i would say if, you know if you can nail that out then that would be the single most biggest differentiator for you in the interview absolutely absolutely i can't stress that enough to so many people reach out to me and all they have a conversation is about case interviews and right. people i i don't know if they even know that there is another part in the interview that exists or they'll say that hey this is a hr interview i'll anyways ace it right they last me about <laughs> tell me about yourself what are your five year goal 10 year goals and then i'll answer it anyways but unfortunately that's not the case that's true and you know in fact when i was preparing for consulting i think a senior told me that there's an airport test so to say uh which essentially says that you know if you are stuck so the partner or whoever is interviewing you they are just figuring out that you know if i'm stuck with this person at an airport in case my flight cancels can i bear this person for next three or four hours yes and if, if the answer to that is yes then you are done then you are in exactly exactly cool thank you thank you so much ankur uh it was pleasure having the conversation i'm sure a lot of interesting points came out of oh, this likewise, and, and look forward to hosting you again for this oh, thank perfect. you thank you so much pavan